Anyways, there we have it. Top dozen reasons people seek medical care mostly for diseases that could have been prevented. And then, look, rather than treating the underlying cause of the disease, typically doctors treat risk factors for a disease. So just giving a lifetime's worth of medications for, you know, high blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol. Right? Think about it. Right? High blood pressure is just a symptom of disease dysfunctional arteries. Sure, you can take drugs every day for the rest of your life to artificially lower your blood pressure, but that's not treating the root cause. Disregarding the underlying causes and treating only risk factors is somewhat like mopping up the floor around an overflowing sink instead of just turning off the faucet. But drug companies are more than happy to sell you a new roll of paper towels every day for the rest of your life. When the underlying lifestyle causes are addressed, Many people stop taking medications, can avoid medications, avoid surgery, spend billions cracking people's chests open. Rarely does it actually prolong anyone's life. In contrast, how about oh, wiping out 90% of heart disease? Think about it. Heart disease accounts for more premature deaths than any other illness, almost completely preventable by changing diet and lifestyle. And those same changes can prevent or reverse many other chronic diseases as well, the same dietary changes, right? So why don't more doctors do it? Well, one reason is doctors don't get paid for it. No one profits from lifestyle medicine, so it's not part of medical education or practice. Presently, physicians lack training and financial incentives, so they continue to do what, you know, they know how to do, prescribe medication, perform surgery. After Dean Ornish proved you could reverse our number one cause of death, heart disease, open up arteries without drugs, without surgery, just plant-based diet, other healthy lifestyle changes, he thought that his studies would have a meaningful effect on the practice of mainstream cardiology. After all, a cure for our number one killer? But he admits he was mistaken. He realized physician reimbursement is a much more powerful determinant of medical practice than research. Reimbursement over research. Not a very flattering portrayal of the healing profession, but hey, look, if doctors won't do it without getting paid, let's get them paid. So Dr. Ornish went to Washington, arguing that, look, if we train and pay for doctors to learn how to help patients address the real causes of disease with lifestyle mess and not just treat disease risk factors, we could save trillions. And that's just talking heart disease, diabetes, prostate, and breast cancer. The Take Back Your Health Act was introduced into the U.S. Senate to induce doctors to learn and practice lifestyle medicine, not only because it, it's better, it works better, but, uh, you know, here's the critical factor. Physicians will be paid to do it. The bill died, just like millions of Americans will continue to do from reversible chronic diseases. We have known for at least a decade that the leading causes of both premature death and persistent misery in our society are chronic diseases that are in turn attributable to the use of our feet, exercise, forks, diet, and fingers, smoking. Feet, forks, and fingers are the master levels of medical destiny for not just thousands of people on any one occasion like a tsunami or earthquake, but the medical destiny of millions upon millions year after year. We as doctors, as a medical profession, have known. Ornish published 23 years ago. But we have not managed to care, writes the director of Yale University's Prevention Research Center. At least, you not care enough to turn what we know into what we routinely do. Were we to do so, we might be able to eliminate most heart disease, strokes, diabetes, and cancer. But you know, saving millions is, is just a, a number. He asked doctors to forget the bland statistics of public health and ask yourself if you love someone who has suffered a heart attack, stroke, cancer, or diabetes. Now imagine their faces, whisper their names. 
recall what it felt like to get the news. While you're at it, imagine the faces of others, like you and me, imagining beloved faces. Look around the room. Now imagine if eight out of ten, ten of us wistfully reflecting on intimate love and loss, on personal anguish, never got that dreadful news because it never happened. Mom did not get cancer. Dad did not have a heart attack. Grandpa didn't have a stroke. Sister, brother, aunt, and uncle did not lose a limb or kidney or eyes to diabetes. We are all intimately linked in a network of personal tragedy that need never have occurred, which leads to what he's asking doctors to do about it. Put a face on public health every chance you get. When talking about heart disease and its prevention or, or cancer, diabetes, Ask your audience to see in their mind's eye the face of a loved one affected by that condition. Then imagine that loved one among the 80% who need never have succumbed if what we knew as doctors were what we do. Thank you.